Hola Christian, hola Debbie, hola Larry, Becca, so good to have you, Rivka, Rivka Le. welcome, beautiful. Let's wait a few more seconds, maybe other people will join. Susan, welcome. Listening to David Zeller. Better known as David Zeller. Jason to be who you want to be wish to be who you want to be wish to be who you want to be wish to be who you are Amen So good to see you Jonathan Hugo Salsa, welcome. <coughs> Hola, señor, says Ami. to start. So this is David Zeller, a great teacher of uh, spirituality. Unfortunately, he died too, too young. So I'm really new at this. Sounds a little bit strange to be talking to a, to a computer. But at the same time, I I love to be in contact, I love to be in communication, and uh, maybe this is a new way, it's a new venue that will start for me, to be in contact with whoever is the you out there. So forgive my, uh, hi Sue, uh, my, this is just the beginning. So maybe I, there are technical things that I'm not doing well, so offer me compassion. So I wanted to have uh, something that I called in conversation. In conversation because I really would like for you to react. Hi, Peter. Um, Peter and I went together to rabbinical school. 
Um, and it's about life transitions. Uh, hi, Adriana. Uh, it's, about, it's about life transitions. And uh, maybe of you know that uh, my wife, Karina, and myself, we are doing a, a retreat at Montaña Azul in Costa Rica on March 12th that we call it Embracing Life Transitions. And we decided to do this uh, because the situation that, are, that we are on, which is a life transition. Uh, many of you know I've been a, a pulpit rabbi for the last 23 years in an amazing congregation, Shelley, hi, an amazing congregation, Bene Gesher in Manhattan, hi Monica, a, a place of creativity, a place of, of, of really tremendous growth. It has been a, an incredible blessing in my life. And together, as I was a rabbi at BJ, I always developed my love for meditation and mindfulness, and my love for nature was always in my soul that I received from my greatest teachers in life, who were my grandparents. They really taught me how to listen to, to, to the wind and to the rivers and, and to really understand the nuances of living in nature. And I'm grateful uh, for them. Hi, Carol. Uh, so I, there's always a, a desire in my soul to go back to nature. And I started doing some seven years ago, as part of my work at BJ, a mindfulness retreat here in Costa Rica. I uh, shared the idea with my beloved partner, Rachel Cowan, with whom we started with this uh, notion of mindfulness and in those days was called meditation retreat, meditation services. And, uh, and we started with that at BJ and before that also at BJ we had uh, retreats, meditation retreats. The idea of combining nature, extreme nature and mindfulness uh, was uh, something that was right my alley and with, with Karina and uh, and with Rachel and Sol Gonzalez, that is uh, the movement teacher, the idea was to combine elements of, of silence and movement and social justice and everything that is really dear. And that's how the idea of this retreat came. And this was the seventh year that I've done the retreat. And in that retreat is where really I, I took the decision. Hi, Cheryl. <clears throat> that this is what I want to do the rest of my rabbinate. I want to bring people in nature to, uh, to experience dedicated, uh, dedicated time. Dedicated time to, 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 to work on themselves. For me, the, the wisdom comes from the Jewish tradition, and from psychology, and from 63 years of life. Um, and the liturgy specifically speaks to me so clearly about um, the wisdom, the knowledge, the certainty that is there in the hidden verses, not in the hidden verses, in the hidden mysteries of, of the verses, of what we say in a rote way, but could really help us to heal ourselves. So to do these retreats is a dream come true. Uh, I just finished, we just finished the, the BJ uh, 2018 Mindfulness Retreat. As I said, Karina and I, we have another one it's called about embracing life transitions in March 12. And in December, actually November 28, we have another one in which we are uh, inviting two scientists. And we're going to be talking about the relationship between uh, the brain and the soul, and uh, we call it when the brain meets the soul. It's how really sur we survive as spiritual human beings during the, uh, the technological era. That's going to be uh, really also very interesting. So we are in a life transition. The life transition is from New York to an eco villa. It's not even Costa Rica, because Costa Rica has cities. So New York one type of jungle, the Ecovilla, another type of jungle. So I, 
some people say to me jokingly, you only do jungles. So we moved to this incredible community, uh, mostly of young people, who, people who want to live a different type of life. Uh, they want to have an alternative education for their children. Most of them work uh, using the internet. Uh, a fascinating place. But the idea that you can make such a change without any cost will be uh, ridiculous. When we make any change of li in life, or life make changes for us, like there is a tragedy, something unexpected, we enter into a new landscape. Yael, so good to, to have you here. And we enter into a new landscape, it's the landscape of the unknown. And I use uh, the, the metaphor of the sacred, sacred, our sacred mythology in the, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, uh, from the story of, of uh, the reconciliation between Jacob and Esau. I'm not going to tell you the whole story. If you really would like to, to see it, go to Genesis 32. But it's a beautiful story. Jacob uh, steals the, the, the blessing. I mean, there is a, it's a whole story, family story. Hi, Marcela, Juanca, Walter. Um, and after 20, more than 20 years of escaping Jacob from his brother, he's going to meet his, meet his brother. And hi, Rebecca, uh, on the other sa side of the, the Yabok River. And so he prepares himself. He prepares himself because he doesn't know if the brother is going to kill him after everything that happened. And he prepares presents and, and, and a way to, to try to intercede in front of his brother. So, so he, the text says that he arose, taking his two wives, his two maidservants, and his eleven children and crossed the fourth of the Yabok. So he crossed the Yabok River, Jabok River. And after taking them across the stream, he sent across all his possessions. So first the family, then his possessions. And this is very interesting. Now, now he's crossing the river. We are not talking here about the Amazon. Okay, we are going to talk to talk about a small river. And uh, so he's crossing the river. And uh, the text says, Va'ivater Yaakov lebado. And he was left alone. He was left alone. So he was left alone in the river. Hi, Kenneth. So he was left alone. And uh, what is this aloneness? This is really what I want to focus on the story. Because the main part of the story also is that there is an angel. Hi, Alex. Uh, there is an angel that wrestles with him. And only when he wrestles with him and he, he wins, he changes. Hi, Devi. Uh, changes his name. And he, the something happens. And he is, in that moment when he changes his name, He's not anymore Jacob, but he's Israel. So there's a lot of commentators that, uh, that pick on this. So who was that man, that angel that he was wrestling? His consciousness, God. Um, the text implies that it's a divine creature. But I really want to wanna, wanna stay before that. The fact that he was alone. And that's that's where I want to stay. Ted, so good to have you there. And I'm asking you because I really wanted to have a conversation with you. And I have something to say. It's the aloneness in the moment of the transition. There is no way to have a real meaningful and transcendent transition. transition. And don't f not to feel dramatically alone. So you are not in this bank of the river, you are not on the other side, we are in the middle. 
So what happens when we are in the middle of the transition? between New York and Costa Rica, between married to divorce, between life and death, between being uh, healthy to being sick, being having a job, being fired, somebody giving us a, a news that is going to alter us. So in that moment, we are alone. In that moment, we are alone. Because in that moment, everything that is us enters into question. Enters into question. And one of the, the attributes that is more needed in that moment is courage. Because we need a tremendous amount of courage to stand alone. And it doesn't mean that we are alone, that we are not with somebody who is with us. Of course, we maybe, God willing, we are with somebody. But in essence, we are alone. Why? And now I'm, I'm bringing the, the incredible teachings of Brené Brown when she talks about vulnerability. Because in that moment, we are going to be seen. We are going to be seen. And we are seen, we are afraid of our own shame. We are afraid to be seen in a way that doesn't give us kavod, doesn't give us honor. So this, this moment of aloneness, I call it, there is a Hebrew expression when we are neither here nor there. Uh, it's called Bein Hashmashot, between the, the lights, between the suns, between the moon and the sun. It's really the twilight zone. So we are in that moment of the twilight zone. Do I make this decision or not? Do I go or not? And when we decided to go, we are there. And everything that is us begins to percolate, meaning all the traumas, all the fears, all the insecurities, all the shame begins to come up, begins to come up. And uh, something else also happens in that moment, and something that unfortunately is so much fostered by our, our consumeristic society, which is the mentality of scarcity. We are not enough. We are not enough. We are not good enough. We are not smart enough. We are not enough. So if we are not enough, we are going, we are going to be seen in our not enoughness. We are going to be seen in that place of vulnerability and nakedness. And we are all always try to try to avoid this. Always try to avoid this. So Jacob is in the middle of the river is crossing. And I don't know how many of you are crossing or have you crossed. So I want to now to see how this is done. I've never done this before. So I would like to, uh, Sarah, hi. I want to ask you about your experiences. If anybody could say something about your experiences of being like Jacob in that, in the middle. Don't, not when you're jumping into the world, not when you're already arriving to the other side. No, when we are in the middle. When you're in the middle and you could say, what have I done? Or you say, I love what I did, but whatever I had before doesn't work anymore. And there's a lot of unknowns. So, anybody would like to share what have you learned in that moment of vulnerability? 
in that moment of aloneness, in that moment of, of change. So this is the part when you write. I'm open. Hi, Bettina. So long without seeing you. So beautiful. This thing of Facebook, I'm new in this. I see people from Uruguay, from Brazil, from Chile, from Argentina, and from the States. So wonderful. So, anybody would like to share anything about what have you learned or seen in the moments of being alone? Or have you felt this existential loneliness in the middle of the river? It just take, takes only one to start. Hi, Ivan. Try to think. What have you learned? Or have you felt in that moment of aloneness? I'll give you also another, another experience that uh, that I learned in a, in, a, in a mindfulness trip. Sarah says, I have learned that I complete as I am. That's so beautiful. Well, that's exactly the point of moving ourselves from the mentality of scarcity. We are not enough, we are not good enough, we are not smart enough to the mentality of abundance. We are enough as we are. Doesn't mean that we don't have to perfect our potentiality and just open and keep blossoming. But in essence, we are enough. The, the scarcity mentality, we are not enough, is what is at the core of the consumerism society. Because if we are not enough and there's never enough, that's the reason why to keep consuming. But, but being enough means, means satisfaction, but not the satisfaction of the, the, the person that doesn't want to improve. Because if we say there is abundance in the world, we say there is enough food in the world for everybody, the problem the problem is the distribution of resources. So we have to do something about it. The not enough generates fear. So because there is not enough, I have to keep for myself. It's the end of generosity. So thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for, for that comment. So whoever wants to share something else, I was saying that also what I have learned in Hi Vale uh, came in a, in, a, in a mindfulness retreat that I did with a coach uh, in the Annapurna in, in Nepal. And uh, great coach Edmond Antoine, he does uh, this uh, these, these tracks in this beautiful, beautiful section of Nepal, where you really do spiritual work as you, as you walk. And uh, I forgot to tell Edmond that, <laughs> that I have fear of heights. And as you can imagine, that's very high. And you, when you walk, you keep walking up, you see the, the clouds, but you see them below you. You know, it's a... Uh, there are moments that are really scary. And uh, there was a moment when there was no wall anymore. It was basically steps. I don't know how these people really build these steps. And uh, I'll talk to you in a moment, Monica. And uh, I was scared because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't move. 
And I was really paralyzed by fear because on one side, hi Nancy, there was a precipice on the other side also. I couldn't walk, watch up and certainly I couldn't watch behind me because I would lose my step. And uh, Edmund <laughs> gave me the most simple teaching that in many ways I am applying to, to everything in this moment. He said to me as he was coming to help me, he said, listen Marcelo, to look to the right is not your issue now. Thank you, Ted. I'm going to you in a moment. Karina also, thank you. So, not look to the right, not look to the left, and uh, not up, not down, but just the next step. You understand? Just the next step. So, Courage comes from the ability to make the next step. Not to look at the end. Not to look at what we have done. So just one step at a time. So Ted said about being honoring the people that, that love you and doesn't matter but for who you are in essence. Sarah is saying that people confuse being minimalistic with being selfish or frugal, but it's the complete opposite. We don't need 90% of things we think we need. We fear of not having or not doing things is in our heads. Completely agree with you. Uh, Monica spoke before at about aloneness, which is a, it's a, it's a real issue, you know. The issue of loneliness versus the issue of aloneness, because I believe that even if we are together, there is a moment when we begin to walk and we begin to cross the, the river from bank, one bank to the, to the other, there is a moment of being alone because we have to own our own decisions and we have to take responsibility and we are accountable for the decisions that we made. And we hope that the, we hope that the decisions that we made uh, came from a place of abundance. Dear teacher Otto Scharmer says that we have to let go to let come. We have to let go to let come. But in that moment of letting go to let it come, like Jacob in the river, he didn't know his brother was going to kill him or not. We don't know what is going to happen when we really release from the possessing. It's scary. It's really, really scary. And the believe that the courage and the faith is built on this ability to give the next step, and after that the next step, and after that the next step. And to pay attention to what is in our head, that's the mindfulness work. What are the negative predictions that we tell ourselves? What are the negativity, the neg negative stories that we tell ourselves for the sake of not uh, arriving to the place that we have to arrive? <clears throat> So we build trust by pay, paying attention to the next step. We build trust by, hi Joseph and Ruben, hi. We build trust by, by walking. I love Antonio Machado's uh, quote. Caminante no hay caminos, hace camino el andar. Walker, there is no path. You make, the, you make the path as you walk. We would like to have certainty, but absolute certainty is an illusion. 
And the only way to really let come is about letting go. About letting go by not by not possessing so much, which is also an illusion that we have. Because we have until we don't have. So embracing life transitions, I really would like also to to tell you, to invite you, those of you who would like to come to be in the retreat with us. It's March 12th. Look at my website, www.marcelobronstein.com. There's still room. But also pay attention to what is it that I'm doing. I would like to share wisdom, to receive wisdom from you for the sake of create uh, a better world. For the sake of create a better world. That is so much in need of a little bit of quiet, of calm, of wisdom, and also of listening. Because nobody listens to anybody. There is so much blaming and shaming. That is another way of, of scarcity. So, I don't know, even know how long. Wow, it's already, it's already 33 minutes, and I promised myself to do it at the most for half an hour. So we're there. So, Walter, you want to say something? When I don't share the little things I am embarrassed of, I turn inwards and separate more, more from those that support me. In turn, feeling more alone, it's a spiral to darkness. When I share even a little, a path upward is fast. And embarrassment are real but not shame, as I thought. Yeah, because we are, we are social animals. We are social animals and we are created this way of running like crazy and being in the treadmill and having these machines, having these machines. And I have two, because I have one for Costa Rica and one from New York. And never being present, being fragmented. So sharing, Walter, sharing, but true sharing. True sharing is a blessing. Martin Buber said that the I thou encounter, when soul meets soul, that's the proof text of God's existence. So lots of love. Thank you so much for being with me. And uh, to be continued. I hope to do more of this. Tomorrow morning, those of you who would like, at 6, at 6 a.m., Costa Rica time, 7 a.m. Eastern time, I will be doing a short mindfulness meditation. Bye-bye. See you soon.